to learn about the randomization test. Okay, so our motivation is, is that our typical tests that we have that are parametric require us to make lots of assumptions, such as normality on some sort of errors or assumptions about variances or lots of other assumptions that we may not feel comfortable actually assuming. So the randomization test is trying to get around all of these issues. And it's pretty simple to do, except that you have to use computation in order to make this work, okay? So if you have invalid assumptions or you just don't want to make any assumptions other than independence of your observations, you can do the randomization test if you're looking for the difference between two groups, ANOVA, all of these can be boiled down to a randomization test. Okay, so here's a basic idea. If the null hypothesis is true, then it doesn't matter what groups items were assigned to. So we could randomly assign them to any group and see how the analysis performs on each and every possible randomization. Of course, the problem is, is we can't do every single randomization because often these get unwieldy large. So what we do is we do this by sampling. So we'll resample and re-randomize the actual observations that we saw, so the y values that we saw, we're actually going to randomize those to their treatment groups, run the analysis, and record the test statistic. Then we're going to do this many, 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 many times and record the test statistics at each time point or at each iteration. And then we can get a distribution for this. So one of the things that we could use is the p-value in order to look at this instead of actually having to look at the uh, test statistic across all of these randomizations. So that's why it's called the randomization test. We're going to re-randomize everything many, many times because if the null hypothesis is true, then we don't have any assignments to groups that we need to worry about. Then what we'll do is we'll actually run the analysis on the real data as it was randomized and see what its test statistic is, and we'll look to see how close they come out. So this is pretty straightforward. Okay, so here's a very simple problem. This is a two-sample t-test. Very simple problem. Uh, notice that we can't really make any assumptions because the sample size is so small, right? So we can't test to see if the variances are the same, really. And we can't check to see if it's normally distributed. So we're kind of stuck. So what we can do is a randomization test. Now, what I've done here to make things easy is here are the value that we actually saw, and here is the grouping, okay? And you'll see what this looks like as we go along. So this is our real data that we saw, and these are the test statistics, okay? So our X bar is 4.02 for group A, for group B at 7.96, and here are the standard deviations and the sample size. Okay, so if we were to run this and get a two sample t uh, uh, test statistic for our t-test, this would be our value. Now, we are not going to go and hit this against a table. We're just going to record this. We have to remember this value because we're going to use it to see what it looks like against all the other observations or all the other randomizations that could be possible. Okay, so we've got to remember this number, and I'll, it's in the slides here, so you'll see them again. Okay, so... Now what we've done here is randomized. Notice I have up here, it's in red, it's been randomized. So now I have group A and group B, and if we look, the numbers actually do differ. So if here was the old one, 3.3, 2.1, 1.9, 5.6 are all in A. Now when I re-randomize, notice 5.6 is here and 6.2, but these are different values, and these got randomized to group B. We calculate the test statistic and we see it's 1.992. Okay, so we're going to record this. We're going to randomize again. So if we were to do this again, notice the numbers changed from here. Notice it started at 7.7 .7, to here. Now 1.9 is in group A, but 1.9 was not in group A in this other randomization. So we do this again, calculate the test statistic, and we get the value negative 3 are negative 0 0.301. We're going to record this value, and we're going to do this again and again and again. Of course, we'll actually have the computer do this. There's no point in us actually doing each and every one of these, especially if you have to do it a thousand times. Okay, so if we were to keep this going, we would see that we have the true value, which is negative 3.433, 
randomization one, our t, t value was 1.992 and so on. And we would go down to randomization K and we would find another randomization. And here would be the T value associated with this. Then what we can do is we can get a histogram of all of these T statistics. Now this is based off the randomization test. And if you look at it, you go, well, this looks kind of normal. And maybe it is, maybe it's not. We're not making that assumption. And that's the beauty of this. Just because it happens to look normal uh, doesn't mean that we actually have a, a normal distribution because we're not assuming it. Okay, so here we have our true value, which is our negative 399 or whatever it was. And we can match this against this distribution. If we look at it, it's way out here on the fringe. So it's actually pretty rare. So we can actually count up the number of values that actually fall below that. So if I want to find the randomized p-value, say, well, here's my estimated value against t star, which is the one we observe. So this is going to be our estimated probability. We have however many samples we did, and we're going to count up the number of them that fell lower than that. So for our example, if we were to do this, there were 10,000 of these that I ran, and 43 of them uh, were less than that. And then I have a mistake here. This should be 0 0.043. Okay, so uh, this was from a previous run that I did, but you get this is the p-value associated with this particular run. And every time you run this, you're going to get a different p-value, which is why my don't match, and this is why I left this in here, because everybody should get a different answer when they run this. Okay, so let's see how to do this. If we're doing this in R, let's just enter in the data. We're going to do this manually. We're not going to put it in an Excel file or anything. And we have the values here. Our values are exactly the same as what we had at the beginning. Okay. And here are the groupings, A, 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 B, B, B. And uh, you might need to pause the video so you can copy all this down uh, because it's in a video and you can't copy and paste it. And then what we'll do is we use the T test in here and use the values against the group and it will run it for us. And if we want to store the value, I'm going to call this T hold one, we can run T dot test against this and put the dollar sign and put statistic and that will put in the value that we actually have. So if you run this and look at T hold one, the value of it, from assuming that you're familiar with R, you will see the value that we had before. Okay. So here's the output of this thing. We don't really care about int confidence intervals or anything like that. But uh, notice here is the value we had that I said that negative 3.4332. And it gives a p-value. But we don't care about this p-value. And we don't care about the alternative hypothesis and all that. Okay. So here we have the t is this value here. Now we could do this in a loop so that we can store this off. Okay. So... Uh, just keep this in mind. So you might want to pause this here so you can copy all of this down. I purposely uh, put it in the slides for you so that you would actually have to type it versus giving you the code. But here we're going to set up the number of samples. So I've called this nsamps1. We're going to sample or re-randomize 10,000 times. Uh, I need to create a container to hold the results because I'm going to run a loop. So here's my t out one. I'm going to repeat zero and samples one time, so 10,000. I'm gonna run it in a loop, so I goes from one to n samples. I'm gonna randomize the treatment group, and here I have this sample function that I can use. So I'm gonna sample from group one. How many of them am I gonna take? I'm gonna take the length of group one, and then I'm gonna say replace equals false, and there should be a closed parenthesis here that you can't see. But replace equals false means it's just gonna permute the values, okay? You could, it'll just change the values and permute them. And it'll be very, very easy uh, to do so that we don't get any duplicate numbers in there or duplicate uh, groupings. Okay, then I'm going to generate the t-test based off of group two. And I'm going to write this into a variable t-test one. And then I'm going to say t-out one, put it in the i slot in my container that I've created, the t-test one dollar sign statistic. Okay, pretty straightforward. And this is what this is going to do. And when I ran this, so you can run that code, uh, here's T out one. My color that I wanted was blue. My title that I put up the top, randomized test statistic. My X label is T down here, and it's just frequency on this side. 
Then I put an AB line at vertical at T hold one, which was my original one. And then I can get the color and I put it in as red. So this is the picture you should get, but your picture won't look exactly like this because you're using a different random number generator than I did because I didn't set a seed. And I purposely didn't set a seed so that you can't reproduce mine. And notice that you will get different P values than me and you shouldn't be worried. All right, so this is pretty easy to do. All I have to do is just check that value against the number, you check it against the number that you had and it will actually work. It's computationally expensive, meaning the computer is gonna run for a little bit and when you see it, it will cause issues. But don't worry about it, just run it. Computing is cheap right now, so and it's gonna get cheaper, so this is not very difficult to do and it's it will give you a test that you don't have to do any sort of test of assumptions at the end, other than they're assuming they're independent. Uh, this method often, often confuses people because it's not taught in standard statistics courses, right? You always assume that distributions work. And here we don't need to, we can just re-randomize, okay? The great thing about this is it can handle almost any type of traditional test. We don't need to just stick to t-tests or ANOVA or things like that. You can do this for just about anything, so long as you can understand how you can link the null hypothesis to what it means in terms of the parameters of the model. Okay, and it has very few assumptions and it's powerful. So if you're in a situation where everything falls apart, you can always run this randomization test because you're not assuming any distribution on anything and you just compare the value from the data versus values that you would expect to see from the null hypothesis and see how it works out. All right, so I'm gonna stop here and let you attempt this on your own data sets, but this should give you an idea of what a randomization test is and how to do it. All right, see you in the next video.